now our executive producer is popping. <laughs> oh, is he? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yes, he is. Did he just clap with us? Yes, yeah, he did. <laughs> he clapped with us, and then for several seconds afterwards. <laughs> I like it. So we it. do it again? He'll start clapping again? Maybe. We could try it. Okay. Let's do it again. Good yeah, job! <laughs> Good job. <laughs> that might be the best thing. I love that. That's amazing. That's hysterical. I love that. You got your own <laughs> microphone and you can clap with us. It's beautiful. Yes. There we go. Hey, friends. I'm Ash. Hi, Mel. We are La Vie Cosplay. This is Shenanigans Cosplayers Say. We are now done clapping. For now. <laughs> for now might come back i mean if the executive producer wants to clap then obviously we cannot clap. let him clap alone so no no one claps alone gosh i feel like it's been forever since we've recorded something shortly before it comes out so everything else has been like with guests or really far in advance <laughs> it has been because our lives have been a hot mess express Chaos. so um we appreciate all of you hanging in there with us Oh, yay! <laughs> oh, here we go again. <laughs> it's very exciting. He's he's going to do this the whole time now. I love it. Get us to clap. Perfect. <laughs> it's amazing. Let's do it. Um, but yes, things have been kind of a hot mess express. Lots of life things. Lots of medical life things. Life is just a lot right now. I changed so. jobs. Yeah, you did change jobs, but that's a good thing. It's a good thing. I work in the same place. I am no longer a quality policy, quality manager, policy type person. I am now a counselor. <laughs> Just a fancy way of saying caseworker, but that's okay. Yes, yes. Less stress. Yes. Woohoo! Less stress. Love it. I'm just tired because I get more chronic medical conditions. I'm so excited. I just got bit. I just got bit. What? <laughs> That's not funny, it's, executive it's very, producer. It's very funny. Hi. Are you going to come hello, say hello sir? to the people? You going to say hi? Are you going to say hello to the people? Oh, your microphone turned off. You probably unplugged it. Oh, he muted me. There you go. <laughs> executive producer. You? Rude. What? Rude. <laughs> what do you think? Are you going to say hello to all of our friends? No. Yeah, who do you think you are? The executive producer? <laughs> Let's see. Um, it's been a hot minute since we've done anything. I have some yep. international results for all of you that we have not yet reported. Oh my God. These international results are so old They're at so this point, old. though. Um, They're so old. So Cosplay World Masters um, was at Ivor Anime in Lisbon, Portugal. <laughs> Back in May, so it's been a hot minute. Um, congratulations to third place from the USA, Meow Meow Cosplay as the Mirror Queen from the Mothers from the Brothers Grimm. Yes. Not no. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations to Meow Meow Cosplay from the USA as the Mirror Queen from the Brothers Grimm. Second place, Brazil. I am going to totally butcher this yeah. username, so I apologize. Um, Mundo Daijeki as the medicine seller from Mononoke. And first place went to Portugal for Glenn Design as Elsa from Frozen 2. And uh, yes, there was a quick change. So, you know. <laughs> Maybe by the next time we record, we can talk about WCS. <laughs> Maybe. Because <laughs> we got some people going to WCS this year. We do <laughs> have some people again, going so... to WCS. Yeah. All that yes. fun stuff. And our um, fearless leader of ICL is Spain's WCS team. So, Because the USA team is our uh, coordinator for internationals from Yomacon, So, So Karma Luna cosplay is... The USA team, but then Gail and Sumari are the Spain team for WCS. So break a leg. This will come out after you have already, uh, or no, it won't come out if you've already gone. You guys go in August. So 
It will come out after the prelims for Team 2024 occur, though. So stay tuned to find out who will be the U.S. representative of 2024. That was a really big sigh. Yeah. Well, and speaking of ICL, special shout out to Captain Amelia for representing the UK in Polymanga. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. With Doctor Strange. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Doctor Strange. Uh huh. So we are back with one of our psychosocial mental health episodes that is based off of a short talk. And a new panel that we will be bringing to multiple conventions this fall. A so convention near you. A convention near you that we can't announce because we literally can't announce any of them. Unless you're not in that geographic location, in which case it will not be near you. But And then it will not be near you. <laughs> um, I will be doing a version of this panel with Dr. Eric Wesselman at Planet FunkCon. Yeah. Um, but we are going to talk about self-expression, cosplay, and belonging today. This was first discussed at a small event called ReggieCon, which was at the University of Illinois. Illinois State University. Or Illinois State University. Illinois State University. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, we were invited by the, by the professors to come up and participate in an event that they put together, which was basically a hybrid of fandom and psychology which, so which makes all sense, the speaker because they're yes, psychologists because that was the psych department of illinois state all the speakers were either psychologists themselves therapists themselves some involved in some form of psychology or were heavily based in like sociocultural yes interactions of some sort so lots of diversity just very lots of different factors that make up like society culture mental health it was a really good time it was like a an interesting like speaking like movie event hybrid <laughs> it was very neat it was very unique yeah. but for those of you who have listened to dr scott and eric with us in the past phone when we were talking with them and had them guesting on the show yeah. they've mentioned reggie con previously um but up until now it's all been just online events so this was their first time actually doing something in person and it sounds like it went over really well and they're gonna plan on doing it next year so stay tuned and we'll let you know yes we do hope that they bring it back next year it's a very unique concept to tie fandom into you know, discussions about culture and society and mental health and, you know, psychosocial implications. So we fit right in. Hooray. <laughs> um, our movie was Cosplay Universe. It was. So um, so we first did a talk about self-expression before they um, did the movie at ReggieCon. And then we were like, well, we should talk about this on the podcast because one of our big things for this season is community. And that is one of the big reasons that people join cosplay is that that essence of community that you can get yeah, from cosplay. So, so I think all of you should just like pause for a second, not the podcast, but just like your brains. <laughs> and I want you to think of a time that you chose a cosplay that you're going to wear and kind of what impacted your decision when making that choice. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about. Well, we are going to first start out with the importance of play. Play still being important even into adulthood. Because for some reason in our society, they make it seem like when you turn the age of 18, you can no longer play in a fantastical, quote-unquote, childlike fashion. You have to play in a accepted fashion. And when you're kids, play is how you learn about the world around you. That's how you learn to understand yourself, your environment, the people with you, what you like, what you don't like, how to do different things. You learn that through playing. Play doesn't just stop because you become an adult. It just looks different. And those socially acceptable forms of play aren't the only things that you have to do. So like a lot of I'm sure a lot of you have like dads that golf. Golf is a form of play. 
video games are so much more accepted than they used to be. Oh, yes. That now it's, like, acceptable for an adult to play video games. Um, You know, going to the bar every weekend with your friends and then dancing is a form of play. But those are socially acceptable forms of play. It is socially acceptable for people to dress up in silly outfits and go on a bar crawl by the majority of our country. Um, my coworkers just did this. So, and they are as, you know, they're wonderful people, but most of them are very like, they follow the societal norm, you know? So that is a form of play that a lot of people will accept. In my day job to essentially write a presentation on how to RPG at work. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yes. So I, uh, I, <laughs> there was a group of us. It was mostly me and one of my close coworkers that does a lot of this kind of stuff with me. I know I told you all that I realized that I do LARP at work and I get paid for yes. it, and that's kind of amazing. Same thing, but I'm put together a presentation like with appendices and everything that actually like teach you how to plan your LARP for your job and how to like do the character creation process. It was really interesting. <laughs> I'm like, this is so much fun and nerdy. I love it. <laughs> yes. What other opportunity am I going to have to like Google things that have to do with D&D and get paid for it? Well, we have a show we need to prep that's going to let you Google a lot of D&D things, All the things and kind of get paid for it. I mean, it's close enough. <laughs> close enough. Close enough. Right? Close enough. But yes, play. So the difference is that for some people, the socially acceptable forms of play are what they need and for other people um in particularly neurodivergent individuals more often than not require something with a little bit more finesse a little bit more of that fantasy Pizzazz. um i feel like part of it is too that neurodivergent individuals feel more comfortable being outside of the social norm I think a lot more people would do things like cosplay if they didn't have that concern about what other people would think. Yes. Honestly, I really do. I do think that a lot more people would participate in activities like this if they weren't so worried about what other people think. Because my coworkers are always like, that is just so cool mm -hmm. that you do that and you can do those things. It's like, well, you could too. Oh, no, no, I can't. Yes. No, I have those conversations no, you, all the you time. You could. Like, you could. You get so excited about Halloween. It doesn't have to just be Halloween. Like, yeah. you can you can do these things. Or, like, they only feel comfortable doing things like this if it's with their kids. Yeah. Because then it's ex socially acceptable to play pretend because they're with their children. Yes. You know, continuing to explore different environments, being different people, different creative outlets is how a lot of people continue to learn about themselves. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I mean, even just looking at cosplay and in general, I mean, you, you have people that take different perspectives of the exact same character. So, you know, my version and my truth of this character might be X, Y, Z, but yours might be A, B, C. And both are valid and totally fine. But we learn more about like, hey, I really like, you know, bending gender norms for example we have there's a ton of cross players in the community and there's a lot of people that will you know change the gender of the character they're portraying and that's totally fine super fun um our one of our friends we met at regicon um talks about fanfic fanficking in like your everyday life well essentially you know if i'm coming up with a narrative especially for a character that doesn't have a lot of like established background if i'm just looking at a character design or maybe something with very limited you know exposure elsewhere as far as looking at the uh reference materials whether it's you know maybe just a still from an art book or something really simple from a video game that just like pops up once you kind of have to fill in the holes if you want to do the play part of cosplay that goes along with that and you're putting a, a really big part of yourself into it whether you know it or not I mean, I would definitely say that our skits, our photo shoots, all of those things, we're 100% enacting our own fanfic. I mean, come on. Absolutely. <laughs> that, that's what it is. <laughs> I mean, essentially, that's that's what it is. When you're running around the hallway and you're staying in character, you're enacting your own fanfic. I mean, it's, it's how it goes. 
But for a lot of people, that's a great way to understand themselves and express themselves. It's just a different way of exploring yourself than what a lot of other people would do. But that's what the great thing about playing different characters is, is you get to understand different perspectives of the world around you. Different, You learn different things about yourself by playing characters that aren't like you. Mm -hmm. Like you discover like different things like why is it that I really like this villain oh maybe it's because they don't feel inhibited or maybe I really identify with this character because they are the closest like me because although they try really hard they uh don't always succeed the way that they should <laughs> um like we always used to joke that it was um you know I love playing a villain Deku was the closest character to my actual person that I used to play. Um, and I have aged out personally of Deku. You know, I'm picking up Steed and I'm like, oh God, Steed is me. <laughs> like in, in true form, like, do I want to be a Blackbeard? Yes. Who am I actually? Steed. I am Steed. I like it. It's a good Steed time. Steed tries, but Steed is very socially awkward, misses all the cues, doesn't always know what he's doing. But he does try really hard. He tries hard. his best. And in the end, isn't as terrible at things as he thinks he is. Yeah. And he's got a really good support system. People like him because he's a nice person. Steed's my little, like, I know you're as insecure as I am, but I kind of love you. And so, like, I connect with Steed in that fashion. But, like, Deku was always a character that made me feel more vulnerable than other characters. Well, Steed's going to be a character like that, too. Because he's closer to who I am than, like... Sinbad. Sure. Or Judar. Yeah. Or Beryl, who are very confident and, you know, give no shits about other, like, what they're going to do, what they need to do. Like, they're really fun to play because they're not me. They give you that extra boost of confidence that you don't naturally have. Mm -hmm. But then you have characters like even Harley to an extent and Steed, where it's like, oh, you're a more vulnerable character. So you're harder to play. But then, in a way, it allows me to understand that part of myself. Sure. In a way that, like, sitting down with a therapist isn't going to. Um, one of the things that I know that I've done a lot, I mean, Princess Lady is a perfect example. Um, oh, yeah. I tend to gravitate towards characters that I have, like, an, an affection for. Um, not, like, a romantic affection, but just, like, I love... No, that's only me. I love this character. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll talk about that next. But, like, I love this character. So, I... And I might not necessarily see myself in that character, but I love them. And this is one of the ways that I want to show I, how much I love them is by being them. So, yeah, Small Lady is totally on that list. Um, I mean, I think Kogoku, we kind of fit along those same lines. There's several of them that I've done. That seems to just be kind of a norm. But if mm -hmm. I have that, like, you know, the, the feels, I guess you would call it, um, for lack of a better term for a character, it, it definitely impacts my decision um which whenever i'm picking a costume but yes you for example um physical attraction and chemistry i would say <laughs> definitely falls under the l category because we used i mean we talk about it all the time about how you you like to pick characters that you are sexually attracted to <laughs> i mean you know yes. but they're they're what they're from the play yeah well i mean really like if you look charisma if you look at them, them those are your two options you have the ones that you identify with and on some level like like your steeds and your harleys and your dekus and then you have the characters that you're attracted to and then i have my weird outliers that i don't really like to cosplay well so. yes but those aren't ones that you really well, like to cosplay but so. like like barrel doesn't fit in the like the mold necessarily but i like playing villains it's like nine barrel sure it's more of that that confident villain yeah well, and you're, like, you're give playing no shits attitude which is what judar falls into too yeah i mean that's kind of where those fall well it's a safe space right. cosplay is a safe space for you to explore that part of your right. identity and see how you like it and whether or not this is something you could do quote unquote in your real life and then if it doesn't work out for whatever reason you can be like oh it was just cosplay and then never talk about it again well right so but then you have you know sen and sinbad yeah. <laughs> and i love them i would say in many ways a lot of people will also um expression of mood so like i mean in people's real lives too people dress up when they're happier and they dress down when they're upset um or just tired and have no spoons like i love to come home and take off 
jeans and put on pajamas because <laughs> I want to be comfortable in my life and I'm I'm done with real pants at that point. <laughs> um yeah, picking cosplay is very similar. I might want to wear Whoa. a kigu or pajama cosplay or something super casual or if I'm feeling really awesome, I might want to dress up to the nines with full makeup and fancy wig. Yeah, that's the that's the one thing that I found hard when you have to pre-plan for con and you have to bring things that if I'm not in the right mood for a certain character, like it's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, the one I always think of uh, in particular is Hikaru. Sure. I have a really hard time wearing Hikaru because if I am not in a pink frou-frou mood, it's it's not going to happen. Like there are just days where I look at the costume I'm like, no, I cannot. I cannot fufu pink today. <laughs> like, and it's same with barrels. Sometimes it's like, mm, I'm not having a day where I can do. I cannot that be costume. this sassy lady I right want, now. <laughs> right, like I want one of my male costumes instead, or I want you know that kind of thing because the and in the, you'll talk to a lot of people that will find that this happens. Your your boundaries of gender get a lot more blurred mm-hmm. when you do cosplay, and you go out into different options and you explore different types of people and characters like you know what is considered you know female may expand for someone you know or that gender nonconformity, mm-hmm. as it's called you know may expand more for a lot of people who cosplay i've known a lot of people who you know discovered they were non-binary and transgender because they started cross-playing you know, you see that a lot for a lot of people. It's also a safe expression for that population as well. Yeah. So, you know, although I don't feel that I fall in that category, my definition of what, you know, female is does not fall in the traditional definition. Sure. Um, we've talked about this before with like all the, you know, the rules that were floating around for Florida, although that just got banned. So now it can't happen. Uh-huh. Um, where we were like, I can't go to Florida because I don't present as a traditional female. So I would probably get sent to jail in Florida. And it's like, you know, but you feel in cosplay safer to explore those kinds of. Sure. You know, and even, and you know, at con, you'll see a lot more people more comfortable with that. Well, and um, and this is one of the things that we brought up when we were at ReggieCon too. Um, our convention yeah. wardrobe. We have piles of clothes that we only wear at cons and nowhere else. We do. (laughs) Nowhere else. You know. I have a whole drawer. Tons, tons of things (laughs) hanging in the closet or folded up in a drawer that I only wear at conventions. I don't wear it anywhere else in my life other than at a con. I mean, we gravitate towards those concepts that make us feel, you know, great, safe, secure, validated, seen, represented in some way. So conventions are one of those communities where you feel like it's a safe space and that people aren't going to look down upon you or judging you for wearing these things that you like to wear so and you're gonna have you know probably 50 different types of fashion walking around the same event and that's just it's really cool to see Oh yeah, the the con wardrobe is a thing. I wish I had more use for my con wardrobe, but I literally just go to work for the most part. So that's also the problem is when you're a full-time, you know, person who works, you uh in a what is relatively a small town, you don't have a lot of opportunity to like do things. Yeah. Necessarily. Um I always feel bad for my convention wardrobe, though it sits in that drawer until it's like, oh, it's con time. And then I'm like, what do I take? Yes, I can't wear all of you in the same weekend. You can't all come. And then I'm like, "Mm, do I want a more feminine outfit? Do I want my more like androgynous outfits? What do I want? The crazy Japanese jacket always comes because everybody loves that jacket. Yes. But like, like, what do I want to take with me? Are we going to try to match? Like... Because we don't get to use it very often. No, but we don't. But that's just a thing. I mean, fashion's always been part of self-expression. Yeah, absolutely. And identifying your people. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Like people use fashion to identify their group that they want to be involved in. Yeah. A couple things that I just added to the con wardrobe fairly recently. Um, we did part of the Black Milk clothing order um, yes. for the Sailor Moon release. 
Well, as you all know, I've had an obsession with Sailor Moon since I was in middle school. So, of course, I'm going to purchase items from there. And they got added to the con wardrobe. And I'm like, yes, I want this. <laughs> I need these things in my life. You could probably get away with those outside of the con wardrobe. I probably too. could. Um, I do have a problem with one of the dresses um, because I am too busty for it. So I bought another shirt to try to wear on top of it, but the event that I was going to wear it to got canceled. <laughs> so Oh, well, yeah. Alas. <laughs> Next time. Alas. So that might have to make a trip to a con um, at some point instead, because I was totally going to wear it to a real world event, but oh well. We're going to have quite a few of them, likely in our <laughs> yeah. not too far future. We have a lot... There's a lot of stuff potentially uh, happening in the fall, kids. There's so, so much. Um, there's so much potentially happening, but nothing is signed, so we can't tell any of you what's happening. We'll right just tell now. you there's a lot of things in the works between now and April. Yes, <laughs> that's so many, things. lots of things, so many things, so many things. As soon as we if can confirm anything, us, we will tell you. But if you want to see us at a con near you, you better tell them now because we're probably going to be booked. <laughs> Just put it that way. Ash only has oh. so many days of PTO available. <laughs> Same. So even though mine is a little bit more flexible, they won't let me take every Friday off for multiple months. Well, mine, so. I can pretty much take one I want off, but I am limited on how many days and they will not let me take unpaid days. Right. So that's my struggle. I mean, I am also not allowed to take unpaid days. I just have the luxury that I work tens so I can move to the day <sighs> so that I don't jealous. work. I would totally... I I would totally work a flex schedule if they would let me, but they don't. But sometimes I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just want to take your PTO. That's Because that's right. why you have PTO. Oh, no, we're tangenting. Oh, no, Beverly, how many have we had already? That's okay. It doesn't matter. We don't need a <laughs> it counter. It doesn't matter. We don't need um, a counter. If we were going to do a counter, we need to go back to, like, episode one. <laughs> absolutely. And be like, bing, oh, God. bing, bing. So if you, if you think back... And I always think about, like, middle school, because this is when it starts, like, fashion is self-expression. It always starts in that, like, junior high era. Well, it's when you start picking out your own clothes and just, or just wearing what your parents it tell is. you to. Well, and it's, it's when people start to get that sense of self-identity and self-expression and realizing, like, that's when you start to explore who you are as a person. Yeah. Is when you hit that, like, 11, 12, 13-year-old age. But that's also when you start to see groupings of people. So that's when kids start to group. And so you want to be able to signal to your group that, hey, like, you know, we should be friends. Yes, we are the and same. So, right. So a lot of people use fashion in order to do that signaling to get people into their groups. So what, what, uh, which box did you fit in in high school? Because I totally either wore all Hot Topic or um, hippie skirts and band t-shirts. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I fit a very specific box. I did do some of the Hot Topic, but I was more interested in buying electronics, spending money on really expensive clothes. So I didn't. Yes. I normally bought like their sales section. Um, and it was mostly just because like. My high school boyfriend had this like obsession with Hot Topic. At one, he went from wearing like cargo khaki pants and like light colored t shirts every day to being a mall goth essentially. Oh, fair. So, okay. Yeah. Now, lots of jeans. I was mostly like jeans and probably t shirts. Um, most of them probably fandom related. I was a huge nerd and the theater kid and all those fun things. So I was also one of those people though, that really like didn't care so if i wanted to wear pajama pants and slippers and it was within the dress code my french teacher would complain but there was nothing she could do about it <laughs> mismatched socks on purpose that was that was the thing that me and my friend group did um or the girls did we would purposefully do the mismatched socks all the time they had to be like the same cut but different designs and that was like a requirement <laughs> well that was how you identified your group yes Via fashion. The fun socks. So. It was fun socks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because obviously it doesn't work with boring socks. You need you need fun no. fun printed socks for things like that. I'm I'm sure there's many others out there who can identify with the Hot Topic mall goth experience. Yes. Um, or the emo punk band t-shirts. Because mm. that was my my other go-to. All the emo punk band shirts that 
I can't find anymore. They're gone somewhere. I don't know. I did find some of my Hot Topic clothes not that long ago, though. Yeah. Every time I think about Hot Topic clothes, I just think about when um, I had gotten rid of a bunch of stuff because we had a flood in our basement. Um, mm-hmm. And then somebody dug through our trash <laughs> and it ended up like on a person <laughs> in a photo. And I was uh. like, all of those things are from my closet. <laughs> I mean, that particular bag might, 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 might have been washed and donated, but I'm 95% sure that I threw it to the curb. So somebody else apparently dug through it and then washed it, decided to wear it. But I just, I don't know, gave me a little smile. I was like, oh, it's mini me. <laughs> like, it was like a, a skirt that I wore in like 2005 to Anime Central. Like there's a picture, a group photo of all of us after we went out for pizza. And I was like, ha ha. We're like, this is that skirt. And this is that corset that I bought for this other thing. I like it. I mean, it lives on. It does. I was not going to wear it anymore. So I guess at least it's good that I had a home. I did not know that it could be saved or else I would have just donated it. But that's okay too. I just think of, and I guarantee you, many of you had this, the plaid pants with the like billion zippers that did nothing. Yeah, I loved my my trip pants. I had black ones, and I had the plaid ones with the zippers. Yep. And then, of course, some of them got banned because we couldn't wear the chains to school, right. so you had to make sure that the chains came off. Um, right. So these people would, like, get out of their cars in the morning and then take the chains off and then put them back in in the parking lot when they left. <laughs> I don't think we could wear the um, the suspenders either that they came oh. with, the straps. That's weird. I think we had to take those off too. Yeah. Okay, but were these the sp- suspenders that you actually wore or the ones that just hung down around your waist? No, the ones that hung. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much any of that stuff that was detachable we had to take off because they wouldn't let us wear it. Um, I do remember my high school ID. I printed a picture of an anime character and put it over where my photo goes. <laughs> of course you did. Of course I did. No, we all had the um, folders where you printed out a bunch of pictures from the internet and then laminated them with um, tape. Yes. And carried those around. I used to make my own stationery with pictures from the internet. Um, yeah, my friend and I decided we were going to be pen pals with each other and definitely made some Sailor Moon themed stationery on my mom's color printer. <laughs> we should probably do an episode at some point about all the ridiculous things we used to do to... Um be able to have our fandoms in the early 2000s you know back before you could just like go literally anywhere or stream literally anything that would be fun back in my i like day. this right we'll have to we'll have to we'll have to write it down yep perfect this is a great plan if any of you have any special requests for things that you want us to talk about in said episode of us growing up with anime in the late 90s and early well, even the early 90s, like I can remember like the early 90s watching anime. So 90s and early 2000s, if you have any requests for, of particular topics for us to talk about from that era, please let us know. So it's obviously not just fashion, although we could talk for days about early 2000s fashion because it was a hoot and it should not come back. Stop Target. <laughs> stop stop it, Target. with the layering tank tops, Target. Please stop. It's back with the lace, back to like the, the long ones with the lace and the layers. No, 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 no target. Please. No, everybody, everybody, no, no, no. Did it. everybody. It's a lot no, of people no, no. still do it. But the other part of cosplay, obviously, is the performance part. The of play cosplay. part. The play, <laughs> the part. play part. Well, and play. I mean, you're playing with your clothes. Yes. In your fashion, you know, our our non-performance cosplayers are still playing. You know, that exploration of techniques and seeing what your brain can come up with and what you can make happen is still all play, too. But performance lets you explore physically, like, different aspects of a character, of environments. It allows you to play often with other people and just different ways to be and exist, both, like, physically, mentally, emotionally. It's all in. It's not, like, that creation part is part of that play, but then actually embodying that character is a whole other element. And it doesn't have to be just skits. Like, we're also talking about, like, photo shoots and TikTok videos and all of that stuff. Like, when you go from, I'm Ash and I'm wearing my Princess Lady costume to, I am Princess Lady. Like, there's a flip. There's a switch that gets flipped. And it's like, you get to experience what things are like for this particular person. And I know that, you know, some 
you know, I've talked with some mental health therapists and they get concerned that like cosplay is this a form of escapism and then like people are just going to escape their lives. And I'm like, but is that always a bad thing? I was like, and <laughs> for a short period of time, is that like, is that necessarily a bad thing? Like, yes, you don't want to cross a line and end up with someone who like literally believes they are that person. But escapism is not necessarily a bad thing. It can be, it can allow your brain to kind of relax. But it's also that that fanfic deal where you're figuring out yourself through another person or through another environment. Mm -hmm. So it's just another way to kind of explore that. But it also allows you to explore another aspect of creativity mm -hmm. that allows you to play like I'm more interested right now in figuring out different types of performance techniques and playing with that. But then that gives me more ideas of like different things that I can do and I can expand on. And that allows me to grow as a performer and as a person. So I do the experimentation of roles a lot when I'm picking characters. Because um, one of the other big things besides affection that I do when picking the characters that I want to cosplay is design aesthetics. So a lot of times I will pick a character that I want to cosplay before I even pay any attention to the source medium, whatever it might happen to be. Um, Yuna is a perfect example of this. I've cosplayed her at least three times at this point at different points in my life. And I'd never played Final Fantasy X the first time that I cosplayed her. It wasn't until I decided, hey, I love this character design. It's just got this great aesthetic that I want to embody that I did it. But... Again, for those particular moments, or if you have, let's say, a character that, you know, is just a photo in an art book or on the internet, you know, you do that fanficking in your mind, like we've talked about a couple times already, and say, you know, this is who I am when I am this character. And then you base the rest of your costume and character design stream of thinking in your brain. Like, this is this is the story and the narrative that I'm going to tell when I am this person. And how do I portray that both through fashion, but also in real life to bring it into that performance aspect? And that's kind of the process I'm going through at Gengar right now, because there's no like set way I need to do this. So it's like, how do I portray this? What do I want to explore? You know, what kind of look do I want? You know, I could have made Gengar very masculine or very feminine. I chose to stay in the middle. It's like, I want to explore this. Let's see what this design would look like. And therefore, how would this character look like and behave? Like, how am I going to behave as Gengar? What other things do I get to try because of this character? And then every time you do that, you learn something new about yourself. Mm -hmm. So I guess for a lot of people, you know, I often wonder if doing things like this, you know, they go, oh, no, no, I can't do that. Is it like... Are you afraid you're going to find something out about yourself like that you wouldn't otherwise? Because that's pretty likely to happen. This type of play. Change is scary for some people. It is. They don't like having something... their, their normal like questioned. No. It's uncomfortable for a lot of people. It, it is uncomfortable for a lot of people. But this type of play will challenge that. And so I often wonder if that's also sometimes why people are like, mm, I don't know that I like want to know different things about myself i could see that they may not consciously know that that's what they're doing there's something to be said for that though because you could find something out about yourself that then you're gonna have to deal with that or not potentially like if it's something you didn't realize was you know life-altering or that could affect you know your friends and your family if you choose to act on it very possible cosplay is a really safe way to be able to identify that within yourself, but what are you going to do with that information after the fact? It does happen. I mean, All the time. I've had multiple revelations, but I wouldn't go back. Oh, yeah. So. But there's lots of things I wouldn't know about myself if it weren't for, like, the Congolese community and cosplay. Oh, yeah. We've talked about how, like, people will gravitate towards each other in our I'm with Stupid episode. Mm -hmm. um, but it functions in a lot of other ways in the same way, too. Like, you know, when you're when you're in high school, the way you're dressing, the way you're signaling is because you're looking for that community and you're looking for that belonging. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you're in a costume from Demon Slayer and you go to a Demon Slayer meetup, you already know that these people near you, they have like interests for you. 
there is that community that you're looking for, especially for people who don't feel like they belong in the typical society, the real world, <laughs> the real world you know, cosplay can give people a place to get that belonging that a lot of other people get more naturally. Yeah. If you don't fit the mold, it's hard to belong. I mean, there's and there's other things when this is true for, you know, real world fashion, too. So um, tradition plays a really big part in it. There are some conventions where like there is a certain, you know, type of attire expected. And this would also fit into like religious and social societal norms, too. So like, if I go to the bunny hutch at Dragon Con, my cohort is going to be wearing bunny costumes. That's just the way it is. They're going to be fandom-based bunny costumes. Um, there was a period in time where we constantly joked long before we ever got Kigus about having Kigurumi Sundays. A lot of other people at that particular period in time would all wear their Kigus on Sunday because it's easy Sunday cosplay. That's just something that other people do. But again, you can identify those people that are like you and it helps bring it all back to we have these things in common, whether it's we like Demon Slayer costumes and we like wearing Demon Slayer costumes or we really like wearing animal onesies. We obviously all like being at conventions or else we wouldn't be here. Well, and I think it's important for people to know that especially for our, our younger audience, our our high school audience, our young college audience, you don't have to find your people in your immediate vicinity, like at school. Would not have people if I did not have con because I do not find my people at work, at school. Like I had to join outside things from high school to have people that, were my friends that also respected me. Fine friends at my work. My work has a lot of lovely people. You know, they're nice people and everything, but I'm not going to go hang out with them outside of work because we don't fit. Okay to find your community and your belonging outside of those, like, places that you have to spend the majority of your life. It is unfortunate for those of us that do not fit in that mold because you do have to make a lot more effort to have that community and belonging when you cannot find it in the place that you spend like 40 plus hours a week at. I mean, with the internet, that's definitely gotten easier over the yes, years. Yes, it is. So. I would be screwed if we didn't have the internet at this point, because I would be very dependent on any time I got to go to a convention and conventions are nowhere near me. It's already hard because I don't really get to do anything in person with anyone because no one lives here. Do what you need to do, regardless of what the societal expectation is, even if people don't want you to keep playing they're just jealous that they can't do as it as long too. as you're playing is totally legal <laughs> yes please 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 uh stick to legal activities yes. but it makes people uncomfortable because it's not what they're used to it it's like that uncanny valley sort of situation like it just doesn't fit they don't know why they don't like it but they don't like it because it doesn't fit what their picture is of how things should work well and the nice thing about cosplay and fandom in general becoming more mainstream is that a lot of people have become desensitized to mm -hmm. it being uncomfortable for them as our generation has has grown up and you know we obviously and that's another reason like why video games are way more socially acceptable now um same concept we're like we have this buying power and this is what we're choosing to do with our money really big celebrities that go to cons and cosplay for fun not just as you know guests there's TV shows and movies about cosplay. There's video games and anime and manga about cosplay. So there's not just that people cosplay from, but actually that is the topic. So it just, it's grown so much over the last 20, 30 years, especially that I would imagine, you know, in the next 20 or 30 years, it'll be pretty normal-ish by comparison. I don't know if it'll ever be normal, but I think it will be more tolerated. Yes. Less less ostracized. Right. Like, parents are more open to it because it's more well-known. People aren't as weirded out by the concept because they've heard about the concept before in, like, a TV show or a movie or something of that nature. Like, it's not necessarily that people are accepting it, but kind of, as you said, it's more desensitized. It's not as, like, taboo. Yes. 
so people aren't as thrown by it as they once were. They're still not like, I'm not really accepting that that's a thing. I don't really want to participate, but it's no longer like way out in like left field. So it should hopefully make it easier for the younger generation to continue playing into their older years without as much backlash as we would have received. If you guys have anything else that you want to add to the conversation, we would absolutely love to hear it. If you have any additional questions related to this topic, throw it at us. Um, like I said, in cons coming up, I will we will be doing live discussions on this topic. So you will be able to come and talk with us. I'm also hoping that in some cases there will be more than just us on the panel as well so that we can get different different perspectives of self-expression and identity within cosplay community. Maybe. At a con Maybe. near you. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. That we can't talk about because <laughs> yeah. we're not allowed to mention like any of the conventions that we possibly have. Um, It's been fun. I'm Ash. I'm Elle. We are Lobby Cosplay. And this is Shenanigans Cosplayers Say. You've been listening to Shenanigans Cosplayers Say, produced by LVC Productions. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Twitch, and YouTube at Lavi Cosplay. Our podcast Instagram is Podcast SCS. Our website is LaviCosplay.com. Have a fun, crazy con or cosplay related story, absurd cosplay question, or just something in general to share with us, email us at podcastscs at gmail.com or DM us at podcastscs or Lavi Cosplay on Instagram. If you like what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for listening, and remember, just because you can doesn't mean you should.